To describe the mandate of the Gascon Thomas Award is to describe Judith Thompson. I'm honored to present Ms. Judith Thompson to you today. To give you a sense of the scope of her work, Judith is a playwright, director, and actor. Her plays are performed across the country in both official languages and internationally. She has twice won the Governor General's Award for White Biting Dog in 1984 and for Anthology, The Other Side of the Dark in 1989. And she's nominated again this year for her latest play, Such Creatures. In 2005, she was made an officer of the Order of Canada. And in 2008, she was the first Canadian to be awarded the Susan Smith Blackburn Prize for Palace of the End, which is given annually to recognize women from around the world for works of outstanding quality for the English-speaking theater. However, she is most proud of her Amnesty International Freedom of Expression Award for Palace of the End. I'm honored to present to you Ms. Judith Thompson. I'm currently at the University of Guelph. I'm, I'm directing students in a hamlet that takes place in a, in a homeless community, a kind of tent uh, city, because of course there's Shakespearean drama in, in every community. And our guiding, our guiding line through this production is one of my favorite lines, in Shakespeare, uh, I could be bounded by a nutshell and count myself king of infinite space were it not for my bad dreams. And when I got into National Theatre School right after graduating from Queens, I was queen of infinite space. My little world, my little life exploded and that's, that meant everything to me. But then, about 33 years ago, after my first semester, I have had famously one of the worst critiques in the history of the school. A uh, critique monstrous. <laughs> I now see, of course, that they were quite wisely trying to shake me into a wakefulness from the kind of comatose state that I was in of the construction of girlhood, Catholic girlhood, small town Ontario hood. And, and all those constructions that we need to shake off in order to find the artist within. And they had to shake very hard because it was a very tight construct. But at the time, it was, I was like the little, the little shack of self I had constructed was demolished. They did a good job. I was not thrown out or asked to leave as they always delicately phrased it. I guess I had an angel in the room. I still don't know who that was. So Nancy, realizing the situation was becoming quite urgent and scary, called the lovely avuncular uh, teacher Carl Hare, who had always been kind, looking for some hope. And what he did while I sobbed through the phone is demanded that I then recite Shaw's St. Joan's speech to him, <laughs> while unable to catch my breath for sobbing because he said, in this moment of emotional extremity, I was finally real. And needless to say, my sobbing St. Joan was not an improvement on the one that I had performed for my disastrous presentation. <laughs> but if you told me at that moment of utter defeat that one day the people at this very school would recognize me for a life in the theater, not for the worst critique ever, not for the worst St. Joan ever, it was really bad. <laughs> but if you told me this, I think I actually would have believed you. Because I was brought up on fairy tales in which the underdog prevails, because many of the extremely talented people I'd worked with before the school and even that first semester at the school did believe in me, also because I had the fool's kind of belief in getting up every time you're knocked down and trying again, and there's the old wisdom that I think it was Winston Churchill or one of those people who said success is the ability to bound with great enthusiasm from one failure to the next. <laughs> And my suffering at the time was so all-consuming, so absolute though, that really I want to thank those people because I felt more alive, I think, than I'd ever felt. And in a strange way, over the next few weeks, as I saw I could live through this, I could reconstruct the shack, the house of self. And as I rallied and resolved to make it through, that's when I became a woman. I have so many magnificent teachers at NTS to thank. The late, great master, Pierre Laferre. I would not be a playwright without the inspiration of this teacher. I, I, I learned to inhabit characters, to speak through the mask, and the words flowed out 
because of his inspiration and his genius. The great Martha Henry, who came in the second semester and taught me and taught that you could teach through nurturing support and not fear to help one find one's voice. The wonderful Perry Schneiderman, uh, the informidable, extraordinary Douglas Rain, of course, uh, the wonderful Ursula Clutterbuck, Diana LeBlanc, they all made us feel what we were doing was the most important thing in the world, the most worthy artistic practice possible, the only thing that mattered. They infused every exercise, every reading, every note with a deep magic, the magic of the soul. And to this day, I thrill to the memories. Yes, there were a few bad teachers. There were several garden variety lectures, of course, and a few frauds. But you know, they made for great gossip sessions and fabulous dinner party stories for decades to come. <laughs> the great ones gave us an artistic standard to aim for, high, settling for nothing less than truth and authenticity, and giving all your soul, all your emotional experience at all time, along with craft, of course. They made it clear the actor was participating seriously in literature, the actor had agency, intellectual and emotional force, and a deep social responsibility. When I write for the theater, I write as an actor improviser. I write with the outrage, the rage it took me for years to feel about social justice. I write roles I hope those who inspired me would be proud to play, and the young people here, Christina, would be proud to play. I write with political and feminist conviction that when I was in my 20s was deemed irrelevant and ridiculous. I write with the magic and the passion for the stage that I saw in these great teachers at this amazing school. I write with Michael Mawson and Pierre Laferre and Patty Crane looking over my shoulder. Uh, I rejoice also in every new regime at the school, respecting tradition while breaking down old walls, taking responsibility for students' project pro progress, and teaching with love. I thank you.